Well, we are officially at Elk Camp 2024. Uh, we got in last night fairly late. We debated hiking in for a ways and just setting up camp in the dark. But uh, there were so many vehicles at the trailhead. There must have been 20 plus vehicles at the trailhead. We were concerned about whether we'd even find a spot that we could pitch a tent. Um, so we just, we uh, set up camp at the trailhead, stayed there last night, and then got up this morning, packed everything up, and, and hiked in this morning. Oh, what time is it right now, Ralph? 12.13. So uh, we got started around 5.45. Uh, made pretty good time. As you can see, we already have everything set up. Uh, accommodations are not quite as posh as they've been in years past, but uh, if it gives us a chance to chase uh, bugling bulls versus trying to find a spike, I think I think it'll do and we'll, we'll deal with it. So we're uh, in a new area. We're adjacent to where we've hunted the last six or seven years, uh, but we're in a new spot. We've never hunted here before. Uh, we made a couple scouting trips this summer, and then I was in here for, I think, like two days over Labor Day weekend to look for deer and, and uh, get get more stuff done for camp. And um, this is it. So this is like, this uh, in this unit, we're able to, uh, we're able to go after bulls, so three-point minimum. So we just, after six or seven years of just, initially it was cows and spikes, but after a couple of years, it turned to just spike only. We just felt like, We've only got so many years that we're going to be able to do this um, and we just figured we'd roll the dice and uh, and see if we could make something happen in a unit where we can actually go after bulls so I'm really excited for that um, when I was in here over Labor Day weekend the bulls were just going crazy in August at the end of August so I've never heard that before so I don't know if that's a good thing and uh, they'll still be going or if they're that was a week ago, so I don't know if it's going to be slowing down now or, or what it's going to be like. Saw a lot of sign in the old unit as we were passing through it to get here. And as you got further over here where we're at, there's very little bull sign. There's very few rubs, if any. Um, but we know the elk are here. I've got trail camera pictures and, um, you know, we know they're here. So it's just a matter of finding the bulls and seeing if they're willing to play. So this is it. Start of 2024 archery elk. So it's Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, late afternoon. We're uh, sitting at a meadow that's, I don't know, three, four hundred yards from our camp. Um, you know, we set up camp all day, so we just wanted to go someplace easy this uh, this this evening. Um, I've had a lot of activity on the trail camera that I've had here, um, but nothing in the last four days. I checked it since I was in here on Memorial Day, and there's, there's nothing new on here, so that's a little bit disappointing. Um, but we're probably just going to sit here for the evening, see what happens. We had a really interesting afternoon. We just finished setting up our camp, and some guy comes, like, just charging in there. Like, doesn't say hi, doesn't introduce himself. I'm, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And he just immediately, like, basically long, long, long story short, he, uh, He's been hunting here for a long time, and he was pissed that we were here, and he's pissed that we're, we're camping where we're camping, and, you know, my takeaway was he was basically trying to intimidate us to get us to leave, um, but in the course of that, it was a pretty long conversation, honestly. We didn't do much talking. He did all the talking. Um, he mentioned that there's, we saw, we went by a big wall tent down in this, the big meadow down below um, on our way up to our camp and I expected that um, but apparently there's a whole group of guys there an outfitter brought them in and then there's a bunch of other there's a whole other group of people that are 
across from them and then there's him and he's gonna have his kids and wife up here and then there's seven more people down below and so I don't know it's not been a great start like I was looking forward to this season because one we can go after bulls and and two we're like we're seven miles back here like I knew that there was outfitters that came back here but I still thought the number of people would would be limited right um I've had more interactions with people in the first uh, couple hours we've been here than I had an entire season in the place we came from the last like six or seven years so it's not a good start I'm hoping things kind of turn around I'm hoping we kind of all find where we can go um, there's plenty of room but there is a bit of a kind of a bottleneck issue just kind of how things lay and where the boundaries are and stuff so you know, there there is a, a little bit of an issue um, on, like, people getting to where they want to go, but um, if that guy would have approached it with, you know, been a little bit more collaborative instead of just trying to, like, scare us off, um, you know, we could have talked about, like, hey, how do we do this so we can all do what we want to do? But, you know, that isn't the approach he took, and he obviously didn't, that isn't what he wanted, so... I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if we run into him again or run into anybody else and see how this goes. But this is the first night and um, we're just going to sit on this meadow and see if we get lucky and see if we can ambush something. That's it for now. Okay, it's Sunday morning. <clears throat> it's our first full day of hunting. <clears throat> Last night, after we talked to that guy who basically, for all intents and purposes, was trying to tell us to leave because we were in his hunting area, um, we just went to a meadow really close to camp, about 300 yards from camp. We sat there until dark. We saw some grouse, and then uh, right around 7 o'clock, right at prime time a hunter <clears throat> came walking down the ridge on the other side so based on what that guy said about how many people were there hunting and then having that hunter uh, cross the meadow from us last night I decided for today we would head down a ridge below camp um, hit the two trail cameras that I have in that area and then push a little bit further past what I did on Labor Day weekend um, <clears throat> just to see if we could kind of maybe get away from uh, all the people. So we left camp um, probably around 5.45, something like that. Uh, I wanted to leave a half an hour earlier, um, but uh, as we were, so it was dark. So as we were heading to the first spot in the dark, we busted some elk. We never saw them. Um, so had we been a little bit earlier, we might have beat them to the spot where we were going to sit and maybe would have had them come down the trail um, in front of us. But in any case, we made it to the first area. We sat there for 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. Nothing else came through. So we packed up, headed down the ridge. There's a meadow where I have a trail camera. We were probably about 100 yards above it. We could see down to the edge of it, um, and we saw a hunter down there um, walking the edge of the meadow, and then looked like eventually he was like setting up on the edge of it. So that completely changed our plans. We were going to go past that, but I was going to check my trail camera, which was probably like 10 yards from where the guy was setting up. Um, Anyway, so we changed our plans and we kind of looped back around. One, not to screw up his hunt, but also just so we could get to where we were going. So we swung back around and we just, we had to go up high and, and just go through some just miserable stuff. I mean, just thick, blow down, just no, like you couldn't keep one elevation, ridge after ridge after ridge. Um, 
some steep side hill stuff you couldn't get your footing some steep stuff we had to go down where like i slid halfway down a couple of them um, not on purpose but just you couldn't get footing so um anyway we worked our way around there's a spot down in the valley below where we are right now that that's ultimately where i'm trying to get to i'd like to think that there aren't uh a lot of people getting to that area it was miserable for us to get over here but we probably took one of the harder ways just because we didn't want to get on top of that other hunter um, but either way i still think uh, it's not easy to get to so but it looks on the map like some incredible stuff and if it's not being bothered um, can't imagine that there's not some elk in there we have been seeing sign we're actually sitting eating lunch right now and right at an elk bed um but it's not a lot we still have seen i think zero fresh rubs we've seen rubs from last year but zero fresh rubs i don't i haven't seen any fresh droppings have you no maybe some droppings that were four or five days old but nothing fresh so we know we're probably in an area where some bulls are coming to kind of hide out but definitely haven't hit a pocket where there's elk living on a regular basis so we're gonna hang out here for just a little bit um and then drop down this ridge to my left and work our way down to that area i was talking about hopefully we can maybe get like a midday bull and uh try to make something happen because we can't we're a ways back in here and it's the first time we've ever been this far back in we're not going to stay until dark and hike out in the dark so we need something to either happen in the middle of the day or very early like afternoon to give us time to um you know get back out here without hiking out all the way in the dark um, so that's kind of it that's the update for now
Okay. I think it's almost 9.30. Um, I've been cow calling for quite a bit. And uh, initially there was no bugles, nothing going on. But now I've got three or four bulls that are bugling fairly consistently. But they're all quite a ways away. They're up in the timber. Okay, that... Okay, I don't know if the camera picked it up, but that guy seems like he's getting closer. He's the only one. So, let me see if I can get him to come down here and see if I can get some video of him. So, that's what's going on. I'll give an update later on the rest of yesterday. It was kind of a long day. Um, once things settle down here, but I want to see if I can get one of these bulls to come in first. Okay, the one I mentioned that I thought was coming is definitely coming. And I don't know if he'll come this far or not, but he is definitely closer than what he was. Seems like he's circling around to my left a little bit. It's really hard to tell. The wind is just swirling right now because the sun is starting to warm things up. Okay, that's one bull. I've got three that are bugling right now, but the one is definitely has worked his way down. Like, I mean, he had to be six, seven hundred yards up the hill. But I feel like he's maybe down here now, but he's still in the timber. He's probably trying to peek out and see if he can see over to where I'm at. I'm in the shade. He can probably. Okay, that's the one that's across the river to my left. Let's see if we can get the... Okay, there's the one that's closer. My battery's running out, so... I'm gonna shut this off until I either see him or... something else starts to happen.
All right, this is going to be kind of a long update. It's Monday morning. <clears throat> well, I don't know if it's even morning anymore. It's probably it's probably between 11 and 12 o'clock. This is our second full day of hunting. I didn't do an update yesterday after lunch, um, really, because I forgot. Um, but the main reason I forgot is because I've been so distracted by how many hunters are are in here that I just, uh, like, I haven't been able to like really focus on the hunt and focus on trying to capture that um but let me let me explain that a little bit so yesterday after we had lunch our plan was to go down uh drop down we were way up on this ridge because we had to circle around the hunter that walked into the meadow that we were going to go to um first thing in the morning so we circled up way around him just some nasty stuff we saw two does up there um and lots of deer sign, but um, after we had lunch, then we dropped down. That was our intention to get back down into the kind of valley um, down there. There's some meadows, and we just we've never been over there before, so it just looked like some kind of good benchy stuff. So we headed down there, and about the time we got down there, we uh, came across a trail camera on a on a kind of a mud hole, and then started hearing bugles, and they were. Pretty quickly, we were able to tell they were a hunter. So then that kind of screwed up that plan. So then we had to back out of there and bounce around again, all the way around, um, make a long loop around him so we didn't screw him up. Um, and then there was another meadow, um, and that was kind of as far as we wanted to go. Because at that point, I think we're like nine miles, um, you know, two or three miles past our camp and probably nine or ten miles total. So... We didn't want to go any further than that. So we sat at that meadow for a good three or four hours, waiting kind of until it got late afternoon, um, evening. And about the time it did, we heard the bugling that we had heard down the valley, coming up the valley. And sure enough, that hunter's making his way up that trail um, that leads to that meadow, bugling and cow calling along the way. And long story short, we run into him. Really nice guy. Um, but kind of screwed up our plans then for that meadow so we let him pass through we stayed there for like another hour we um we called and you know n nothing we didn't hear anything but i mean it was a beautiful beautiful mountain valley um just had a little creek running through it and i mean it was it was really cool um but you know nothing nothing from it and then at that point we were already like I don't know, four and a half, five miles that we had hiked so far. And we had to make a big loop all the way back to camp. And we only had a couple hours to do it. So kind of just kind of put our heads down and took off. And I just knew that valley was full of hunters. And the further up the valley that we got, it was more and more hunters. There's a, you know, there's a bunch of camps up at the end. And we just, we knew. So we didn't do any calling or anything. I mean, we watched as we walked to see if somebody would kick something to us or if we just run across something. But, you know, essentially we just uh, headed out. Well, when we got a couple miles away from our camp, we ran into another camp, talked to those two guys, really cool guys as well. Um, you know, and everybody you talk to, they're like shocked at how many people are in here. Like we're so far back and yet there's just, seems like a hunter behind every tree. So, Ran into those guys, talked to them for a while. We actually ran into their camp. We didn't know they were there. And uh, uh, then we kept going. We got back to the main trail, which then at that point, you still have like over a mile left and it's all uphill. Um, and we were feeling it at this point. But uh, then we ran into two more hunters that were on the side of the trail, just kind of bugling in the evening to see, you know, try to locate something for the morning. Again, really cool guys. Talked to them for too long because then it was it was dark by the time we were done talking to them. And we had to hike all the rest of the way back in the dark, cross that creek I've crossed um, in the dark, and uh, get back up to camp. So it was, I think it was like nine o'clock, if not later, by the time we got back to camp. And it was over nine miles that we went, and four or five of those miles were just brutal miles. It was nasty stuff that we were in, so steep, you couldn't get your footing. I think I already talked about that in my last update, but anyway, so when we got back to camp, Ralph immediately said, Hey, I'm, I'm taking tomorrow morning off. Um, he was pretty smoked. So, um, I knew I was coming out by myself this morning 
And uh, I just I kind of just wanted to hit a reset and get refocused. Like, yeah, there's a lot of hunters here, but talking to those last two, they come here, they've been coming here for like eight years and they've said there's this many hunters here every year. And, uh, and, the, and the one guy said he still gets an opportunity almost every single year. Um, and so, you know, that was good to get some perspective. So I decided for this morning, I'd come back, um, into our old unit, um, and just see if I could locate, since I was going to be by myself, see if I could locate a bear or a deer. Um, and if there were elk bugling, like, you know, uh, just have some experiences with, with them. But, um, so that, that was kind of the plan. So got up, got it, got ready, hiked down the trail, cut into this area there's a bunch of meadows um there's some pretty thick stuff between the meadows i've never been in here before this part of it um anyway so worked my way through had a cow come across the meadow i did some light cow calling at the first meadow i came to did get a cow to come out into the meadow um she did catch my wind she was about 140 yards she caught my wind and took off um, but then I was hearing a bull bugling a little bit further down um, in, in the, the next, somewhere in the next meadows. There's several different meadows. I didn't know where. So I figured, you know, I just work my way that way. It's great. It's a great area of great looking stuff for bears. So um, I figured I could run into one of those at any time. So I just got the wind right and made my way down here and eventually came to this really big meadow. Um, and I was still hearing the bugle, but it had clearly moved off. So it was like it was going to bed. Um, it was probably around 8 o'clock at that point. Um, so I just found a spot at the tip of the, the trees here and, and just started cow calling out into the, the meadow and up on the ridges above me. Um, and it, and it was, there was nothing at first. Other than that really distant bugle that I'd heard, there was nothing. Um, after about maybe 15 20 minutes of calling I started getting some bugles and once I got one then I got another and then I got another and I think I had up to four uh bugles at one time but they were all distant but I just kept calling they'd bugle I'd call and eventually like two of them definitely got closer there's no question about it um but the ones across the river and my wind was kind of going that way so I didn't really have much expectations for him but the other one was the wind was perfect I mean, he was just up on the ridge above me, and, and he was coming. And uh, again, I guess long story short, I called for 40 to 45 minutes. He came to the other side of the meadow. I could hear him in the trees across. I don't know if he was raking or if it was just him busting through, but he would never show himself. He would not come out. And he was bugling the whole time. Um, and he came from probably 700 yards, I'd say, up the ridge all the way down. And then to not come out, I don't, like, I was concealed. I was in the shadows. There's no way he saw me. The wind was right. I just, I don't know. Like, some, something about, you know, the calling or just something wasn't right. So, again, just I called to them for, you know, probably 45 minutes. Um, they continued to bugle, but I could tell, even the other ones, but I could tell they were kind of getting further away. So, at that point, I'm like, okay, I'm done. It's time for me to take a break. I'm going to eat lunch, um, just sit down, relax. It's just an absolutely gorgeous day. Um, so, I just figured I'll, you know, I've been walking through kind of swampy, marshy stuff. I figured I'd dry my boots off and, uh, you know, just relax in the sun, get my, you know, pack off and all that. So, I sit down in the sun because that, that was my intention. I was going to eat lunch. Like, I got my boots off, I got my socks off, everything's drying. Um, I, I mean, I got stuff scattered everywhere. Um, I mean, it was, it's so nice. I, I had my shirt off at one point just to dry the back of my shirt off from, you know, wearing the pack. And I'm sitting there just relaxing. I can still hear some, some elk bugling. I cow call a couple times, but I'm just like, yeah, whatever, it's, nothing's happening. I'm here for, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. And I, I look up and I'm looking directly across the, the meadow. I look up and there's a bull out in the middle of the meadow walking directly towards me. It hadn't made a sound. That was, he was not one of the ones that I'd heard bugling um, just recently. Like, I don't know if he was earlier or what, but 
wasn't making a sound. I was just on a beeline to where I was sitting. And I'm in full sun. I don't have the camera, nothing. So I immediately like get up on my hands and knees and crawl over. I'm trying to grab stuff and pull it out of the sun. Um, I'm trying to grab the camera and I, you know, I, I'm behind this tree and he walks over and I, I'm trying to get video through the tree. I'm sure I didn't get it. Um, I mean, he was, he was a really nice bull, big body. Um, you know, for sure a five point, I really behind the tree peeking through the branches, trying to get the stupid camera to focus. And I mean, I just, I, I couldn't get a good shot of him. He was always behind branches, but you know, when I first saw him, he was probably 60 yards. He came in to 25 yards, stood there for a long time, but it seemed like a long time. I'm trying to hold the camera and trying to get some sort of shot of him through the trees. I'm sure it's garbage, but, um, and then, and then he came even closer. He walked behind this other tree right here and he was at 15 yards, but he was directly behind the tree. I couldn't get anything there. I was hoping he was going to walk all the way through. Um, but that is right kind of where my wind was going. So I didn't know at any point I thought he was going to probably bust, but I'm, I'm trying to film him. And while I'm doing that, I can hear another bull that's probably 150, no more than 150 yards away. And he's bugling his head off also. And it sounds like he's coming too. So I stand, have kind of a standoff with this bull right here for, man, it just seemed like forever. It's probably two minutes, but it seemed like forever. And eventually, like, I can't see him. He's still behind the tree. I don't, I don't know, but I'm like, this other bull is coming. I'm not going to get any video of him because he's behind the tree. And when he leaves, he's going he's gonna to bust. So I'm like, I'm just going to start moving and get set up for this other bull. And I heard a little bit when I did that, but I, I never did hear him like completely take off. So I don't know how long he stood there. But sure enough, this other bull is coming. There was no question about it. So I'm like getting my tripod set up so I can actually use it. And you know, before I was just holding the camera on the tripod because I, I didn't have it high enough to see through the branches. So I'm trying to get that all done as I can hear him coming. I'm not quite sure where he's going to come out. He comes out. I mean, this is, I couldn't make this stuff up, right? So he comes out. I see him. He's a nice, big, beautiful bull also. Again, I think he's just a five point. I'll have to watch the video, but just, but a, just a beautiful rack, right? And a and big bull. He comes walking out and he walks behind. And so I've got my, this time I'm like, okay, I'm getting this guy, right? And I'm right on the edge of this tree. I'm thinking, okay, if I step out any further, I'm in the full sun. But I think I'm just out enough where I can just get video of him. So I, I start recording. I look at my screen and my battery has the line through it like it's dead. Like there's no time left on it. Like you've got to be kidding me. This can't be happening to me. I've just had two big bulls come in. The first one within 15 yards. This guy's coming in the same exact route and I'm, I'm not going to be able to get any of this on video. So I have an extra battery in my bag. I'm like, there's no way this can't be happening. So he steps behind a tree. I pull the battery off, jump in my pack, dig out the, the battery I have in there. It's inside a bag, inside a pocket on my back. Get that battery out snap it in just as he's he started walking out from behind the tree now he's coming this way but snap it into the camera wait for the camera to turn back on and by the time it does now he's getting past where like i had the camera set up so i'm in the same situation again he's through the branches i, I it's, it's unbelievable but anyway so you know i think i just get a little bit of him but then he's behind the tree and i'm like screw it i'm getting video of this bull so i just step out Again, I'm holding the tripod. I'm not able to have it sitting down, so I don't know how shaky it is. But I just step out. I think it's crooked, but I'm like, I don't care. And I know he's going to see me. And sure enough, after a couple, he's staring right at me. After a couple seconds, he, you know, realizes this isn't good and whirls and takes off running. And and then I'm like fumbling, trying to figure out where my cow call is and <laughs> try to get him to stop again. And I did get him to stop. I think I got just a little bit more video. And then eventually he went off. But he, like, he kept bugling. And I thought when he whirled and took off running, I thought I heard this other one. So this other one might have been here the whole time. I don't even know. Um, 
But man, it, I mean, it was that was incredible. And these bulls, like, I had been calling for like 45 minutes to bulls at the opposite end of the meadow, across the meadow, and these bulls came from this direction, and just like, just like someone flipped the switch, and they're like, they're coming. That was crazy. That was so exciting, and. You know, I know the whole time when I'm calling these bulls, I, I can't shoot them in this unit. Um, but I like that still was an incredible experience that like I I wouldn't get any other way. So anyway, I still haven't eaten lunch. Um, I thought this morning was going to be just a complete, uh, you know, uh, you know, just a burn the morning type of thing because, uh, you know, it was so quiet when I was coming in. Nothing was bugling. I was surprised. I expected things to be bugling, and I thought it was just going to be a throwaway, right? But um, not now. Like, that just changed everything. I just, I, I don't know what I have to do to be able to get some of this stuff on video. Um, I mean, when they came, when, they, when each one of them, when they walk out into the meadow like that, and they just got their head up and they're looking and they're rack. I mean, man, it's just, that's incredible to see. And the sun was shining on them and phew, what a, what an experience. And the fact that I just like had a yard sale was just like, well, it's, you know, I was going to start calling again around noon, but that was still like an hour away. So I'm like, I'll just eat, relax in the sun, you know, and then I'll start calling again, see if I can get something going at noon and, <laughs> I still might. I still might see if I can get some others going, but that was awesome. Um, I haven't decided. I think I'm probably still going to stay in here the rest of the afternoon and then do some maybe predator calling to see if I can locate a bear um, in the evening. I, I don't know. Um, it's not a long hike out of here. Uh, so, you know, if I stay for a bear, it probably means I'll be hiking back to camp in the dark again but you know we'll see it might be worth it all right so that's the update so far so we're halfway through the second day um still haven't really figured out how we're gonna navigate all these hunters in the unit where we actually can hunt a bull but uh it was a this was a good reset um get me kind of refocused and uh and then get back to it tomorrow probably for as far as bulls are concerned. All right, that's it for now. All right, it's about uh, 20 to four. I started some predator calling. Um, I called probably about 20 minutes ago. Just sitting and waiting. Um, feels like a good spot, but the wind just, every five minutes or so, it'll swirl and switch. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm planning on staying here for about 45 minutes. Then I'm gonna move to a new spot, do it again, sit for 45 minutes. And just keep doing that until I either run out of light or get back to the trail. So this is just the start. 